Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JD Traders Tea Time with me, that is on the channel, because today is the 11th of June 2020, so yep, welcome everyone, welcome to this um, Thursday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so um, also just before we jump into the charts, quick uh, mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. Um, now then, uh, also let's quickly see what's happening here. Just a quick update. So you have the figure continues to rise, but of course, we'll take a look at this number tomorrow morning and see where we are at tomorrow so um, uh, but of course the mo hopefully the daily cases here can um, can go down eventually but uh, of course yeah like I said right now um, right now they are down but um, uh, well I mean like I said let's see how this is gonna play out uh, tomorrow uh, jumping into a few charts here now the first one on the touch on here is the, is the German DAX now um, this is what I talked about uh, this morning basically what I was saying that even if we see a drop below this upside line still yes of course we will we could consider a bit of a decline here uh, however the more comfortable level for us after a break of which uh, we could consider the downside would be somewhere from around here from around the 11,770 zone uh, which is marked by the high of the 6th of March as you can see for now the index is yes in the negative zone uh, the market is the the market is quite uh, let's say down in the red and uh, uh, but the most important is the fact that it's still trading below this upside support line taken from the low of the 14th of, of May um, but as I said keep your eyes on on this area in a way this could drift a little bit lower however if it gets a nice hold up somewhere around the 200 day EMA then um, the bulls might reverse this one back to the upside however like I said let's be very careful for now let's play a bit of a, a waiting game um, now then, FTSE 100, oh, and by the way, uh, with the D German DAX, uh, also quickly, uh, basically the idea which I talked about kind of worked out nicely. So the fact that uh, on the 9th, uh, I was talking about this idea where if the uh, the, the index drops below the 12,660, 12,671 territory and closes below this, then this, yes, increases the chances of a potential move lower towards this upside support line. So we managed to get our uh, kind of target uh, reached. However, as you can see, the index continues to slide. So yep, that's why keep your eyes on this idea first. Uh, for now, we may see a, a continuation move lower. Uh, similar stories with the FTSE 100. I talked about this one as well uh, this week, and uh, I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on, on these two upside lines. Now, this one one taken from the low the 23rd of March the slightly longer one and the shorter one taken from the low of the 14th of May as you can see um, the um, the index managed to break this upside line the shorter term one and uh, now it can now it continues to drift further south uh, I talked about this idea where I was saying that if if the index falls below the 6,231 territory then yes uh, further declines are possible but only up until this uh, upside support line taken from the low of the 23rd of March as you can see this is where the index seems to be heading to right now but uh, we are keeping an idea idea of this where we could see a test of this upside line but if it if it provides decent support we could see a nice rebound and a push higher so that's why yes from the very very sh very very short term perspective yes it, this could continue drifting lower however uh, be very careful here right now 
and uh, yep, let's keep an eye on this upside line. If it provides decent support, then yep, a nice rebound could be possible. Uh, NASDAQ 100. Now here, uh, the market is not open yet. However, uh, looking at the cash index and where it is currently trading at, and let me just quickly um, have a look at that one. Um, well, of course, uh, the th the thing that is down, that's yeah, that's for sure. So yeah, it is drifting lower. The cash index is currently uh, balancing at around 9,900 level, maybe just fractionally above it. However, it remains still above this, um, slightly above this upside support line taken from the low of the 3rd of April. So, um, what I was mentioning previously that in a way, yes, a bit of a correction here could be possible. Um, and uh, uh, by the way, I mean here because the, the, we will have a nice opening gap here to the downside now, this this formation that we're going to be seeing here will be a nice doji here and um, and if I'm not mistaking, uh, let me just quickly double check, uh, it's going to be a nice island reversal if I'm not mistaken, yes that is correct, so uh, we'll have, a, uh, well not only that it will have a nice uh, uh, shooting star here, um, we'll also have a nice island reversal, so basically a strong reversal indication, uh, so keep your eyes on uh, that one, uh, let me just quickly, um, yes, so um, there we go, and basically the fact that, like I said, the fact that we're going to have a nice gap here to the downside, it creates this, uh, first of all, shooting star, a, a re island reversal here. Um, from the technical side, both uh, are considered uh, strong reversal signals. However, uh, given the situation here, we cannot really talk about any downside yet until we get a clear violation of this upside support line. So, um, if we do get a nice strong move below this and we get a nice daily close below this, then yes, lower levels could be met, especially if the price starts falling below the 9737 territory here which is the highest point of february this could just kind of s make the the downside scenario even stronger so that's why guys for now be very very careful first of all uh yes we are forming uh we are forming we're going to be forming a nice reversal sign here however don't get me wrong that if by any chance this drifts lower in the first half of tr in the first uh, part of the trading day uh, the US trading day but then at the end of the day it still reverses back to the upside and moves higher then we can ignore all these reversal signals uh, so that's why I'm saying that keep your eyes on this upside support line if that gets broken now this is where it's, it's a, this is going to be a totally different game uh, it could just strengthen the idea of a possible move lower uh, gold Gold um, here is at a very interesting spot. Now I talked about gold this morning, and uh, we we as you can see we've tested this uh, 1723 territory even slightly below that, um, and it acted as a very good area of support from which the uh, commodity rebounded and it still remains here. So of course uh, this kind of makes us a bit somewhat bullish because. Although, yes, uh, what I was mentioning before that, yes, uh, we will consider higher levels if we start getting a push above the, uh, if we see a push above the 1723 territory, still the more comfortable level for us is from uh, 1748. So after a break of the 1748 zone uh, and a nice strong daily close above that level, yep, we could aim for higher levels. So uh, for now, basically, yep, keep your eyes on that one. It's uh, very close to this area. Uh, we are somewhat bullish, uh, but just that extra confirmation, that's what we need in order to aim for higher levels. Uh, in terms of the downside, we will stick to the same idea of 1680 zone. Uh, we need to see a drop below this in order to aim for low, low, lower levels. Uh, Litecoin. I uh, haven't looked this this one for quite a while, but uh, as you can see wh exactly why, because it's, well, it's a little bit on the boring side, so because we cannot really do anything here and it's still stuck, it's similar to Ethereum a little bit, I would say. Um, the uh, the price is still stuck below April's high near the 50.74 zone um, and on the other side it's on the other hand it's still balancing above this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 13th of March so basically um, in a way um, still the I would say the, the the crypto continues to create these higher lows 
However, it's struggling with this key barrier, which also, by the way, coincides with the 200 day EMA. So, um, so yep, that's why for now, guys, we cannot really do anything until we see a clear violation of one of these lines. Um, US dollar against the South African Rand. Now, I haven't looked at this one for quite a while, but uh, basically the pair fi finally found good support and found good support near this area right here, near the uh, 16.3353 zone, roughly around there, just basically fractionally above the uh, 200 day EMA. So it just had, kind of fell shy a few points from reaching uh, from reaching that 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 line. And you can see now um, US dollar against the South African Rand is pushing higher. By the way, in terms of the certain news that came out uh, today, just right now, um, and this is something that I've mentioned in my morning video, the initial jobless claims guys so the u.s initial jobless claims they came out uh slightly better than the forecast so basically finally it has broken and let me just see how many weeks were was that um con of constant redness i would say so one uh about um so about third it's the 13th week so yep it uh, on the it it broke the 12 week streak of uh, numbers that were coming out worse than the forecast. So now at first, first time after like 12 weeks, it is now better than the forecast. So basically uh, the dollar is getting a slight boost. <clears throat> And uh, yep, uh, we're seeing here uh, US dollar against the South African Rand is traveling higher. Um, it, we can see that, yep, for now, we we will aim for a lo slightly larger correction. However, we'll be very careful. We are approaching this key area of resistance, which is also marked, uh, which is marked by the low of the, the 25th of March. So previously it acted as a good area of support. Now it could take the role of resistance. And uh, that level is around the 17.1730 zone, roughly around here a nice good break above this could send the rate further north uh, towards this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 24th of Mar uh, April and uh, yep and then after, after that we will take it from there because for now um, it's going to be quite interesting to see if, if this pair can uh, first of all get closer to this 17.1730 zone and then overcome it if it can do all that then yes we will aim for this downside line for now we'll be very very careful um, ADUSD. So this is where I'm talking. That the, the what I'm saying that the uh, US dollar is uh, performing quite well. Of course, don't get me wrong. The Australian dollar here is on on the weaker side as well a little bit. Um, however, this move for now, looking at this technical picture on AUDUSD, this could be uh, a temporary occurrence because, as you can see, we're still above this short-term upside support line taken from the low. Of the um, of the 19th of March, um, and in a way, for now at this point in time, any move lower could still be seen as a temporary correction before another leg of buying. So that's why, guys, be very careful here. Yes, the dollar is strengthening a little bit, um, but uh, it's here in this pair. It's mainly due to the weakness of the. Uh, Australian dollar and uh, yep, uh, risk currencies, like commodity cur linked currencies like uh, Australian dollar, uh, and it's more right now. It's more actually acting as a risk currency, so uh, that's why uh, yep, it is uh, it is kind of pushing lower, and uh, we are seeing this uh, this kind of this correction at the moment because we cannot really talk about the downside yet until we get a clear uh, violation of this upside line so that's why I, I do understand it might be a little bit of a difficult one to wait however um, be very careful near near this upside line if we get a nice rebound then yes we will aim for uh, these highs the uh, the December high the January high and and this high that we saw here and uh, these highs that we saw here in, in the beginning of this week so somewhere near the 0 0.70 32 35 mark but again we'll reevaluate everything again later for now we are leaning a little bit more to the downside towards this upside support line uh, GBP Aussie now this leads us into this so uh, just a quick update on 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 some of these pairs um, I talked about this one and I talked about this one yesterday and uh, today this morning uh, in my espresso and basically we're now getting close to this barrier the 1.8337 what I was mentioning what I was saying before that 
a nice good break above this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep higher levels slightly higher levels could be met because we're not going to drag this one away to the upside here because don't forget that we're still below all of these EMAs which could be seen still as a as a bearish indication so that's why uh, this move higher for now could still be seen maybe as a temporary correction uh, so that's why uh, yes we could aim for some upside uh, especially if it pushes above the 1.8337 zone a similar story with euro aussie um, so this morning we we're still below this 1.0 uh, 1.6366 zone uh, i was talking about this one and basically was what i was saying that if we get a nice pop above this then yes this could open the door towards higher levels slightly higher levels because because, <clears throat> uh, well, uh, we will a only aim for this downside line taken from the high of the 4th of, uh, of May, um, and then we'll take it from there. Because if this downside line gets broken, yes, this is where more uh, this is where more buyers could be joining in and potentially driving this one higher. However, uh, like I said, we will be very, very careful uh, because... Again, uh, coming if we come back to the AUD USD pair, still you can see that we cannot really talk about any downside on this uh, on this pair and, until it's trading above this upside support line, and that's why this move here could kind of be the same. Um, it could be enough to fill, uh, or let's say, until the AUD USD reaches that upside line. So that's why the, a, a nice hold up could occur near this downside line here on Euro Aussie. So that's why be very careful, guys. If we do get a break above this, then yep, higher levels could be met. A uh, quick update on Euro JPY. Now I looked at this one uh, in the beginning of this week and uh, basically I've talked about this idea where a bit of correction could be possible and last week I was I talked a lot about this pair because as you can see it exploded heavily to the upside it traveled higher and uh, managed to reach the area near this uh, barrier right here near the 124.43 zone and then started reversing back down now initially what I was saying that in a way if this pair drifts lower but finds good support near the 122.87 zone then we could see a nice rebound and a push higher but if this area breaks the next target for us here could be around the 121.15 zone and as you, as you can see this is exactly what's happening this is by the way the high of the uh, 25th of March and uh, yep for now that's that's going to be our target we are just a few pips away from the from reaching this level but if this fails to provide support then uh, well a further decline could be possible towards the 200-day uh, EMA. Uh, initially, of course, it will be the 21-day EMA, but uh, then, yep, the slightly better area could be around the 200-day uh, EMA. And if you want, we can also, by the way, uh, let me just quickly capture this one. Uh, we can also draw a Fibonacci here uh, to show that how much ha the pair has retraced already. So it did the the 23.6% retr uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. Now it seems that it's aiming further down uh, where the next level could be around the 38.2% re uh, uh, retracement on the Fibonacci. So that's roughly around the 100 and 20.60 level but again guys for now the target is the 121.15 uh, uh, a nice good break below this could yep open the door towards that 38.2 percent retracement on the Fibonacci which is roughly around the 120.60 level and then of course we will take it from there because uh, slightly below that we do we, we do have the, the 21 day EMA and the 200 day EMA as potential targets um, and finally euro USD uh, so this pair is still balancing well, well actually approximately around there where uh, we've looked at when we looked when I've picked up on this one on in, uh, in my traders espresso um, so it's still at the same kind of level roughly um, it's still struggling to get back above the 1.1384 zone we need to see nice good strong move above that in order to aim for higher levels and in terms of the in we even with the downside we cannot really talk about much downside until we get a, a strong drop below the 1.1230 so basically if it starts drifting lower from here which it could do um, it, this could still be seen as a correction as a temporary correction before another leg of buying however uh, as what I've mentioned this morning as well what we don't really want to see here is uh, this pair starting to form a range here roughly between these two levels and kind of moving sideways for quite a while but again uh, 
the market doesn't know who's do what we want it to do. So yeah, but that's why we'll be very, very careful. So guys, I, again, with the Euro dollar, uh, wait for, if you want to aim for higher levels, wait for a nice confirmation break above the 1.1384 or even better, a nice daily close above that level in order to get, like I said, in order to consider higher areas, slightly higher levels, because don't forget that we do have two strong resistance levels here and uh, the high of uh, 10th of March and the 9th of March, uh, and which is which are roughly near the 1.1458 and 1.1496 respectively. So these two could provide decent a decent hold up. But again, that's uh, a bit later if we see uh, a nice daily close above the 1.1384 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. So guys, I really hope you found it useful and uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. If you want to capture my video tomorrow morning, uh, my traders uh, espresso as always uh, just a little bit after six o'clock GMT time uh, I'll like I said I'll pick up on some of these instruments some new ones and uh, yep we'll take it from there just to let you know that there won't be any traders uh, tea time tomorrow uh, we'll resume with the tea time uh, on Monday but uh, the, the traders espresso will uh, go ahead uh, tomorrow as as normal. So yep, uh, like I said, catch capture my video then around six o'clock uh, GMT time. And uh, yep, like I said, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much, guys. And bye bye.